And as always, esteemed audience, um, for more interviews, including uh, a written interview with, I think, year one uh, of Susan Hawk as a literary yeah. back in, in 2011, uh, you faced the seven questions, uh, as well as, uh, in fact, you know what, real quick digression, just looking at those earlier in preparation, it was like a, a bit of a time machine. Yeah. In 2011, you mentioned favorite TV shows uh, made me laugh because you were talking about um, you just finished watching Battlestar Galactica uh, and you begun Mad Men and you're thinking about uh, the uncut version of Downton Abbey. I'm like, yes, I remember all of that. What a glorious time. For I know. That's so <laughs> funny. That, that is the particular thing that you mentioned, Rob, because I was thinking today about the fact that I, I always remember doing that Q and A with you because you asked about favorite TV shows because not a lot of people at that point you know I when you do these online interviews not a people had not a lot of people had asked me that question and I think it is a really good way to uh, help understand someone's taste um, so good question good question Rob well heck let's uh, update it for the modern age how what, what are your favorite TV shows now what are you watching well let's see. Um, Right now, something that I'm watching and loving is Hacks um, on HBO. Really funny. Um, I am watching, I'm also watching Flight Attendant. I think that's what it's called. It's also on HBO. Um, sort of a thriller. Um, fun. Those are both very, sometimes something I'm watching feel like, it, even if not, uh, even if not, directly translatable to what a potential kids book project might be. Um, it, it's sort of like, it could be something. Um, both of those are very adult, I think. But um, um, I also just finished watching with my husband Severance. Um, did you did you watch Severance? Yes, my wife and I watched it together. It yeah, that is a it was the really- show she watches the show whilst I watch and that was, that was an us show. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That that was that's an us and over me too. Um, did you guys like it? We loved it. Yeah, it's great. It's great. And another crossover show my husband and I are now watching because we finished Severance. We are watching Barry. Mm, yes. Are you? Have you watched that? I'm. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm. I'm caught up to. I think we're right in the middle of season three, so I'm like two uh -huh. episodes behind. Uh huh. I think Barry is an absolutely amazing show like the combination of character development, emotional beats, <laughs> drop dead, excellent plotting. I, I think it's like, I want every, every writer to watch it because I think it is really, I mean, it's a TV show, it's for adults, it's, you know, but I, I think it's a, like a masterclass. I love Barry, I really think it's amazing. What compels me about, uh, lots of things compel me about that show. But one thing that compels me is none of the characters are likable. They're all no. despicable and Barry is the worst. And yet <laughs> Barry's I, I feel terrible. Yeah, but you just love them. You just love them. I, or I do at any rate. I mean, I, or let's just say I care about all of them. Um, even though they're, they're terrible. That's a great, I love that show. I feel like part of it is just because everyone is so terrible, it makes you a little bit more forgiving of Barry. <laughs> right. It's true. He's he's in really good company. Um, yeah, that's a great, that's a great show. Um, yeah, what else, what else are you watching that you're loving? Oh, well, as of this moment, I am on season two of The Handmaid's Tale. Oh. I uh, watched the first season forever ago and I had read the book and I was like, oh, okay, that's a wonderful version of the book and they're going to mm -hmm. keep going and that's great. But I know that this is just going to get darker and grimmer. So I'm out. And then the, as we're recording this, this, this will be old news, but the time is steamed out in tears is, but there was that recent leak that uh, the, the Supreme Court is going to do away with Roe v. Wade. I'm like, okay, well, never mind. We're going to live in Gilead. I better yeah. watch, take notes this time. <laughs> Let me find out what our future is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that, that's interesting that you say that about it getting so dark. I read, I read Handmaid's Tale a long time ago and then, and then reread it shortly before uh, the TV show happened. I didn't know um, that the TV show was happening. I just, I don't know. I was like, oh, I want to read this book again. And um, so the show is pretty fresh in my mind when I watched the first season. 
I think it's an amazing show. And I watched the second season and I think I didn't do, I can't, I stopped watching. I don't know if I stopped watching it after second or third. I can't remember, but I did feel like I just, uh, it just got too dark for me. I got, it just got too dark, but that's an amazing, it's so interesting to me because they really take the book and go much farther um, because the book is, you know, the, the show is just much bigger in terms of story and characters than the book is. It's really interesting to see how they built on, on what was there. That was fascinating. I'm curious. I mean, like I say, I'm uh, three, as we record this, I'm three episodes away from the end of season two, but I'm, I know Bradley Whitford's coming, so I'm going to stick with it. Um, but um, what my initial um, uh, hesitance to watch this, I know it's a Gilligan's Island type of situation where if Offred ever, June Offred ever gets free, the show's over. So she's always going to be there in some capacity, which yeah. means they will have to get darker and meaner as the show escalates just to escalate the yeah, you tell- hesitance. Yeah, you're but totally now right. that uh, the world has gotten darker and scarier, I'm like, oh, what the heck? Let's. <laughs> <laughs> <Right, exactly. laughs> Why not? Yeah, 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 yeah. Right. No, there's a point. I can't remember where it is, but it was at the end. The last one I watched was at the very last episode of whatever that season was that I watched. And June Offred made the decision to stay. It was like, there were there she had options and she took the option to stay and i was like but what <laughs> and and as you say right because there's no show if she doesn't stay so has to be oh i know season three she gets away and then there's their reason to come back there'll, there'll be something right. yeah <laughs> exactly Exactly. Which is why, at what I think wisely, when she did the testaments, which I've been enjoying, I, I just recently listened to. Um, it's about other characters who aren't offered, so it's not a sequel. Yeah, either. I didn't. I haven't read that. I'm curious about that. Did you enjoy it? You listened to it. I mean, enjoy. I think is the wrong word, but I definitely right. appreciated and respected the craft that that went into it. Mm-hmm, and yes, mm-hmm. I listened to it, and it's got a. I think Ann Dowd is the plays Aunt Lydia, so it's Aunt Lydia from the show playing. Aunt I Lydia. love her. Oh, what an awesome call that was for the audio book. That's great. That's great. Highly recommend. Plus, Margaret Atwood uh, hops in there every so often, and she's. Oh, uh, she re- does. Uh huh. Oh my gosh, I love Margaret Atwood. I was just listening to an interview with her. I can't remember what that podcast was, but it was so great. Um, she's so funny. Um, I hope I'm that smart and together when I'm in my eighties. I um, wish I were that smart and together right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I agree. Actually, I agree with that completely. Um, so yeah. Huh. Well, it's so fun talking with you. It was. We will have to do this again sometime, if not on the show, but by God, in person. Now I would love to do back that. Stated here at uh, Casa de Kent, I'm getting back out to conferences, so hopefully I'll see you and I'll buy you. Yeah, a yeah, yeah, yeah. Me too. I just got a conference invitation um, this week. Um, somebody asking, you know, to come if I would come be a speaker, and I was like, oh yay! I love. Com- I mean. You can't, I can't do too many, you know, you could get worn down with doing too many of them. So, um, but I love being in person with people and talking about books. Oof, it's the best. Not, um, I always feel like going to a conference as a literary agent, as opposed to an author is like being the only human in a zombie movie. <laughs> <laughs> is that worrisome with all those authors? Surrounding? Well, I'll tell you this. <laughs> it is a boost to the ego. Let's just say Um, whenever I come back from my conference, my husband is always like, oh, conference Susan is home. She's a big deal, guys. (laughs) You have a a dangerously inflated uh, idea. Yeah, it's like, um, if you'd like to know my opinion, I'd be happy to share it with you. (laughs) Because my opinion matters a lot um yeah no it's it's good to go I mean I I genuinely I mean I I like talking with people and being with people that's really fun but I also feel like you know I I learn 
there's amazing writers there talking about craft and I learned from that too, you know? Um, oh, L'Oreal Sanderson does this. I'll suggest that to my clients. You know, I mean, really it's, it's an opportunity I think for me too, not just for the writers. So.